very big. You have uh, uh, multiple dwelling projects with uh, large number of people living or working in that particular area. You have to get an environmental ministry clearance also, right? So these are all regulatory agencies with which you have to interface in uh, taking the project forward. And then you would have number of consultants you will be dealing with in the whole process. You would have uh, technical consultants. Uh, for example, even if you are an architect engineer, uh, you may have a separate uh, services contractor uh, consultant. Uh, the, again, the services consultant may have a plumbing consultant, may have an electrical consultant and so on, right? Uh, and different kinds of specializations depending on the project. Then you have uh, legal uh, people coming in. People need to ensure uh, that uh, say the property you are developing has all the legal uh, uh, issues taken care of in terms of uh, transfer of uh, titles and so on. And then when you put together the contract, okay, the way you execute a project is there is a contract that the owner has with the contractor. Now, has the contract been properly uh, defined uh, in terms of meeting the customer requirements as well as legally properly being done? So, you would have lawyers, owner would have lawyers assisting them, contractor would have lawyers assisting them and so on. You have financial people, any project, most projects uh, are financed through debt, okay, the owner will be putting in certain money. Even if you are building a house, you go take a loan, right? You put in uh, say 20 or 30 percent of the amount, the balance you take it as a loan which you repay over a long period of time. Even if you are, uh, if a, if a owner is building a hotel, they would put in certain amount as equity and the balance is brought in as loan, right? Now, how do I get this money uh, and how do I get it on good terms? So, I may have to have financial consultants to help us. So, they, you will have whole bunch of these various consultants that you interface it. So, if you see it is a lot of parties involved, you have to manage all these uh, parties involved, you have to interface with them and get things moving. So, it is quite a challenge for a construction management team to implement a project. Now, if you look at the, the uh, managing a construction project, we, the methodology that we follow we call project management methodology. Now, the managing of a construction project is not the same as managing a hotel or a factory or a, a hospital uh, which is a continuously running uh, operation. That is what we call operations management, but a construction project right, has a clear beginning and an end. There is a, there's a need that has been identified by the owner and they have gone through all this process. The building is built and turned over to the owner. The construction team's responsibility ends there, they go on to another project. So, there is a clear cut, clearly defined beginning and there is a clearly defined end. If you are building a factory, once the factory is completed, then it gets into operation stage, manufacturing stage. Let us say it is a car factory, then the cars start getting manufactured. The construction team's role is over there, right. So, project management, so the definition of a project is it has a distinct beginning and an end, right. So, this involves when you are doing project management, there are three major steps that we classify the, uh, uh, the uh, stages that we go through. Uh, one is the planning, right. You need to plan for the project. How long will it take? What resources have to be brought in at what time? How much of the resources that I have to bring in? In what sequence should I execute the activities, right? I have to first excavate, then I will do the foundation concreting, then I have to come out of it, then I will do my plinth beams and other things, then I have to do my structural concreting, right? Then I will do my masonry work. So, all this is a sequence of activities that we do, and these activities could be one after the other, we could be doing them in parallel. Uh, so, all that has to be planned out, okay. So, once you plan, then you start executing the project. You actually deploy the resources. And when you are doing planning, you make a number of assumptions. You assume that the output or productivity of the crew will be so much, that these people will be pouring so much concrete in a given hour. They will be able to, this equipment will be excavating so many cubic meters of uh, soil per hour, right? Based on which I estimate the duration. I have so much quantity to be ex uh, uh, excavated, 
the expected productivity is so much, let us say 80 cubic meters per hour, I have 800 cubic meters to be ex, uh, excavated, so 10 hours, right. But actually when you execute, you may be able to get 80 cubic meters per hour, you may, uh, you may get lesser, you may get more, then the project is not going exactly as planned if it is less, right. If it is more, of course, you are in a good situation, but when the productivity is less, you need to start getting controlling. This is where we are talking about controlling, that is you, had, you have a plan, this is what I am achieving. So, if I am falling short in terms of uh, time, in terms of if I am overrunning budgets, what do I do? How do I get the project back on track? Uh, do I bring in more resources, right? The number of excavators I have uh, mobilized are not enough or do I uh, improve my, uh, maybe the planning itself is not correct. So, I need to start redoing my planning, right. Uh, so, this is something that should, should be done continuously as the project is progressing. And in the construction project management context, you will see many courses that you, you uh, learn have heavy emphasis on planning, okay. And many projects you go, they do a reasonable job of planning, but when it comes to uh, controlling, that is where they do not do that good a job. No construction project in this world goes exactly as planned. The number of variables is just too many, the complexity is high, we have seen the number of parties involved, uncertainties are very high, projects are of long duration, right. Even in medium sized project will take at least a year, very large projects could take even 3 years, 5 years, 7 years, right. And to predict exactly what is going to happen there and what is going to be the productivity, what is going to be the availability of materials is a huge challenge. To give you an example, take the price of steel. All of a sudden, the price of steel in the 6 months period between uh, say January and uh, this July uh, this year, it jumped up from less than 30,000 rupees a, uh, a ton to about 50,000 rupees a ton, right. And suppose let me say I have uh, bid for my project in 2007 middle for a 2 year project. I could have never anticipated such a big price increase. I would have anticipated say 10 percent as per inflation or 15 percent at the most, not a 50 percent increase. So, these are the challenges that the, uh, but then you have already bid, you have offered a price to the owner saying I will do it for this price. Now, today the price has gone up, what do I do, right? So, this is where are the challenges in executing the projects. So, it is not enough that you plan, you also need to, uh, as you are executing, you also need to control. So, it is a very, very dynamic process. The point I am trying to make here is the whole process is dynamic, it continuously you are updating your schedules, you are updating your plans and so on, okay. So, what is the objective of a project management team uh, if you that is implementing the project in terms of, uh, if because I am saying I am going to do project management. So, what are the objectives of this team? So, broadly if you look at it, any project has a budget associated with it, right. Anyone getting into a project, any owner has certain amount of money that they have within which they want to execute the project, right. So, whether I take it as a loan, I bring my own money, uh, I have to plan for it ahead of time. Now, if, if the project exceeds that budget, I am going to be in trouble. Where am I going to bring the money from? The project may become unviable, right, because I, I put in some money, I get some return, right it is based on how much money I am putting in. Now, if I am going to put in more money and I